Broadcasting live from the Roanoke Valley of Southwestern Virginia. Join us and see what life looks like from a medium's perspective with Reverend Tracy Lockwood. The Medium's Medium. We'll explore the tools of psychic development, hear stories and experiences from the other side, and learn to listen to our natural intuition. Now, our host, Reverend Tracy Lockwood. Hello, beautiful lights, and welcome to another episode of From a Medium's Perspective. What's my life purpose? That's a question that I hear frequently from my clients, and generally they're searching for a deeper expression of themselves, either through their work, career, or possibly a volunteer venue. But because we're the path to our greatest achievements, that question could better be phrased, what do I want to accomplish in this life? In what arena do I want to accomplish it in? Because, of course, it's up to our will what we do. But that question, what's my life purpose, we can get a clue to that answer because maybe it's written in the stars, And today we have a life purpose specialist joining me on the show. She's an intuitive astrologer and human design specialist. She's host of Empower You TV and radio show host of the popular blog talk radio show, Living Astrology. She's highly proficient in several different practices of astrology, including Western astrology, Mayan astrology, and human design, which she calls astrology for a new paradigm. You can find out more, if you'd like, during the show on her website uh, at living-astrology.com, living-astrology.com. Please welcome, help me welcome back veteran guest, Janet Hickox. Welcome back, Janet. Hi, Tracy. Nice to be here. And that was a great intro. (laughs) Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate your being here with us today. And I'm excited because that's really a central question for us as our vibrations are changing and we start really reaching for things that are authentic and taking off the veils and showing who we truly are in the world. You know, we do ask, you know, what's my life purpose? What am I supposed to be doing with my time down here? Um, I think it's sort of an interesting way to approach it through astrology. And for the listeners that are not familiar with it, what is human design? Ah, great question. You know, human design is an astrology that came to the planet in about the mid-1980s. And it was actually at the same time there was uh, the harmonic convergence going on. And so new information was filtering into this planet. And along with it came human design. And I really kind of call it astrology for a new paradigm because rather than just looking at the mechanics of what planets in signs do or in what houses planets do their thing. It really takes an energetic look at you as an individual and how you're here to live your life, how it is that you're meant to make decisions. It really is more about how we can be our authentic or true selves in relationships and how we can work together with one another uh, to really get the things done that we want to get done in our lives. But more importantly, we can do that with self-love. We can do that without judging one another over why your personality is the way it is versus why mine is. And literally, you know, working together to form uh, a more peaceful uh, future. And of course, life purpose, if you get that question you got to know that I get that question all the time. Absolutely. Right? That's like number one question just about from my clients or from people I talk to on my own radio show. You know, they're they're wondering what they're here for. And, you know, when the outer world, such as it is right now, gets crazy, right, or when there's all this change right. going on, 
um, people get even a little bit more serious about the search for self because they, they kind of understand there's not much I can do about what's going on in that outer world. So I best look to my inner world. Yeah, right, think, right. Yes. Yeah. So so there's, you know, a, a real um, tendency for people right now to really be asking that question. What am I here to do? Who am I here to be? You know, what is my purpose? You know, I find it just particularly interesting. It makes absolute perfect sense to look at things like that from an astrological perspective because, We would have certain characteristics and stuff. But as I understand, the charts look quite a bit different for human sign. How would you describe the way the charts look once they're constructed and what are they based on? Well, a human design chart is based very much like a traditional astrology chart. We use your your date of birth, your time of birth, and your place of birth. But rather than um, constructing a round circle with houses and, and signs and all of that, what you get is a birth chart filled with different columns of numbers that relate to oh, let's call them personality traits that are both conscious and unconscious. And then we get this beautiful body graph of nine energy centers and it's colored in and it's, you know, uh, white in some areas. And it really, I I swear, Tracy, it just calls you in. If you're at all open to, you know, what's going on on the planet, you're suddenly being called into finding out more about yourself through this particular tool. And at the bottom of that particular chart, it tells you all the specific about who you are as far as type and strategy, uh, your authority and your conditioning theme and things like that, all of which are new terms relative to astrology because I don't usually talk about that to people when I'm doing their traditional astrology charts. Right. So, so I think they're both pretty valid. I mean, I, I still use traditional astrology. I still teach it because it's still valid. Um, but I think human design gives me an entryway into who you are as a person and who you're meant to be and what you're meant to be doing in a way that traditional astrology doesn't always unlock the key because it's so, it's so vast, right? There's so yeah, much, yeah. there's so much to it. Um, so I really, I do use both, but my my inclination for people right now is to get in touch with your human design. Who are you here to be? Because I'll tell you what, the, the planet's frustrated. The planet's angry. The planet is disappointed. The planet is bitter. And the reason it is, is because we are not living our lives true to ourselves. We've been yeah. conditioned, right? We talk about conditioning in human design in a way um, that prevents us from living our authentic selves because for one thing we grew up within an education system we may have grown up with a religion or a religious background we may have grown up in a specific culture where we're being taught to behave in certain ways or to do things in certain ways that may not be authentic to us and if that's the case then what you're being met with in the outer world is frustration bitterness disappointment and anger so This way we open up the pathway to you living a full, happy, joyful life. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you know, just sensing those emotions that are characteristic of people as they're unfolding and searching and finding their path. You know, we, we do get frustrated because we hit sort of a vibrational resistance and that resistance is there to say, this is really not the most expeditious path. Why don't you find one that feels better to you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like beating your head up against the wall. How long can you do that before you're bruised and battered or you have a concussion, right? Well, <laughs> you know, and that's actually an interesting example. I was just talking with a friend yesterday and we were talking about, you know, how spirit will give you a sign and we're like, ignore it or like that's not real you know and then and it's sort of like then it gets amped up a little bit and it's like no I'm I'm I'm, I'm cool I'm gonna hold I'm holding you know and then it gets amped up a little bit more and it's like <clears throat> and you're like really serious I don't want to change and then it gets <laughs> amped up to a point where you just have to do something you have to do something else and and the the signs and urgings from spirit are not there to boss you around. They're not there to hurt you or make you miserable. They're there to help you tune into your intuition so that you can follow the path that leads to the happiness 
the shortest route. And of course, the earlier we listen, the earlier we succeed, you know, the less frustration, disappointment, bitterness, or anger that we experience. Absolutely. 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 And, you know, we think of those emotions as negative emotions, but they're not, they're actually indicators to us right. of what's that is going- such a good point. That is such a good point, Tracy, because for example, if you're a generator type, which is one of the types in human design, frustration is your hallmark conditioning theme. So I know that if I'm feeling frustrated, I'm either doing things the incorrect way where I'm trying to push myself into something, mm-hmm. or I'm experiencing uh, or getting ready to experience a shift in the energy. And so if I, if I recognize that before I go out and, you know, quit something or do something different or, you know, go into a depression, um, then I'm ready for when opportunities show up. And I am more conscious and aware when a challenge shows up. So it's all about, you know, being ready and using those emotions as a way to be able to kind of have insight into what's going on with you. Yeah, and that's absolutely what you do with your chart by creating sort of interesting categories of personality types and then by understanding how you are made up, you know, their options of how to better uh, serve that. I know we went over it in a previous episode, but, uh, you know, I can't remember all the categories. What are the different uh, types? Types, yes. Yeah. In human design, there are five types. There are the generators, the manifesting generators, the manifestors, the projectors, and the reflectors. The generators and manifesting generators are here with the energy of work. I mean, that makes up approximately 70% of the population who are here with a lot of sustainable life force energy. So you could call them the builders or the, um, the people who are here to experience life as a journey to mastery. The, yeah, yeah and, and I think if I remember correctly, you were a generator. If I, I remember... I, before the show's up, I will open up the uh, program and look for your chart because I'm awesome. pretty sure that's Thank what you so wrote. much. Oh. Thank you so much. It's just, it's not that I don't remember the impact of what you said because it resonated completely and helped me understand some aspects of myself and a couple of things made me laugh, um, which <laughs> were good for me to become aware of. They were silly things that I needed to know about myself. Um, right. But also, um, it was very helpful, but I don't remember the terminology of it. So yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, I have that somewhere (laughs) in my piles of things. So um, yeah, yes, uh, you know, you, you talked about, um, so generator, man, say them again for everybody. Generator, manifesting generator, manifestors, projectors, and reflectors. So you have these five types. And each type has a strategy. So, you know, here I am as a generator, as a, I am a generator, but I meant I'm a Gemini in traditional astrology, but nobody actually gave me a strategy for how I'm designed to live my life based as a Gemini. As a generator, though, I have a strategy that helps me Uh, to make sure I'm making good decisions or at least, you know, entering into things in the proper way or in the correct way for me. Now, I just pulled up your chart, Tracy. You're a manifesting generator. So some of this is going to ring true for you as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. You're most welcome. So generator types, including the manifesting generator, are here to respond to what shows up in their outer world, meaning you're not here to initiate action. You cannot go from what's going on in your mind to creation. You have to wait to see what shows up in your outer world that matches what's going on in your mind or what's inspiring you within. And when you do that, then you are using your energy correctly and life tends to unfold for you in the proper way. Now, as a manifesting generator... Isn't that amazing? It's just so little. I want to interject something because I just got an epiphany. (laughs) That's how I prefer to do my readings. It's, you know, I'm not interested in performance. 
I'm not interested in cold readings. I don't like to do them. I can. I don't like them. It's too much energy for me. So I like my clients to make a list of what they would like me to address, and they choose to tailor it. And that's when I'm at my best because I can give them major proof, major depth, major, you know, prophetic yes. insights and uh, interpretive insights based on them. But it's almost like I have to wait for them to form their intent. And it's good for them too. There's a reason for that. But that really clicked when you said that. I thought, oh, no wonder yes. that works for me, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because what you're doing is you're responding to something that's showing up outside of you, right? It's not yeah. that you're you're not forcing something to happen. You're allowing something to happen. And that, you know, uh, my uh, human design teacher always said that generators and manifesting generators are dancing with the outer world, not so much about, you know, identifying with what's inspiring them or ideas and things like that, that come up from within, but it almost becomes a magical journey waiting to see what does show up in your outer world that matches what's going yeah. on in your inner world. Yeah, that's how it's been throughout my life. Just different moments of genius have followed a need. Like I yeah. see the need and then I can come up with a solution for it. But, you know, I don't walk around like, I don't know. It's like I don't, it's, it's funny because I feel like I don't really create I do create, but I create constantly and I have ideas popping in all the time, but it's almost like I'm just at my best and responsive when somebody else just initiates or, or tells me what they, they are want wanting or what yep. they are focused on or where a deficit is. And then boom, genius floods in. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> and you know, I love that you're using that word because I use that word a lot with my clients and that this is actually human design is a tool for you to connect with your personal genius. And of course the word genius is all in, it's not just that you're extra super smart genius actually goes to the root word for the genes that we carry within our body. And therefore there is a connection with the DNA. Oh, and so, wow. you know, living your genius is connected to you living out the light that's being transmitted from within your DNA. And your DNA is different from my DNA is different than your daughter's or your son's DNA, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we have commonalities, right. but we also have specific things through traits that are turned on or turned off. Um, that you can see very clearly through human design. That is so cool. And I yes. like that you said, uh, allow things mm -hmm. to come. And I'm finding that path, that synchronicity, sort of like when we allow things to come through, then that's when, and when we connect with our intuition and our sense of self through the, like the human design astrology right. that would let someone see themselves from that perspective and understand all is well this is how you were built <laughs> you know exactly <laughs> right exactly yeah. right you know and we're uh i i will get to the other three types but i just want to say this really quickly because in human design we are very well aware that the biggest sense of conditioning that we have in this world or at least here in the united states and maybe canada if you're canadian and you're listening you might recognize this too is we are taught to use our minds we are taught from the earliest days to think to be logical to be rational and in human design, we say that's only one third of the way of knowing the world. There's oh, also absolutely. intuition. There's yeah. also knowingness. These are these are ways into to um, uh, truth that you know pretty much we've been conditioned out of. Nobody comes along and says to you, "Well, what does the wisdom in your body say, Tracy?" Right. No one asks that question. Why not? <laughs> no. They ask you instead. Well, what do you think? Well, in, in human design, there is not one person on the planet, probably never will be, that is designed to use their mind as a decision-making tool. Right. The mind is really just for thinking, but not identifying with the thinking. And of course, I see coherence in that between other wisdom traditions where they talk yes. about us you know, with the inner observer and not, not uh, attaching to our thoughts and our emotions and allowing them to be more like the screen that we are watching and not necessarily adopting a decision-making based on what we're seeing in our mind. So to me, human design becomes way coherent in terms of how we are really meant to be living our lives. So get out of your head and get into your body. That's 
the big thing for all of us, I think, with human design, uh, well, let me rephrase that. It's the big thing for all of us who want to live our lives authentically. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Get out of your head and into your body because that's where the wisdom is. Yeah, so, but what a great tool to, to find some of those answers, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Go ahead. I was just going to say, so go ahead and tell us about the okay. other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we have three other types, right? The other types are the projector, which makes up about 22% of the population. And the projectors are very, they're, they're here with a, a wealth of wisdom. They're really wise about people. So they make good leaders or managers or um, in some way uh, they're, they, they take on leadership roles. But their particular strategy is to wait to be invited into the big things in life. For example, relationships, jobs, moving or relocating. Um, and if, if they don't wait to be invited and they just leap into things, it causes no end of bitterness for them. And so it's the hardest, I think probably being a projector would be the hardest of all in the face of the world that we live in, because if they're constantly waiting to be invited, then others of us with a lot of energy, remember the 70% of us that are generators or manifesting generators, are often, often throwing titles out at them like lazy. You're just lazy. You don't want to do the work. Or passive. That's yeah. another good but they're not here to work in the same way. They need to wait to be invited. And what they do in between invitations is they rest or they're just in waiting. Now, um, the other type after that would be the manifestors. The manifestors make up about 8% of the population. These are the guys who are here with the true energy of initiation. They are the ones that start the ball rolling. They're not here to necessarily see it through from the start to the finish, which can make us that are generators and manifesting generators crazy. And we want to call them flaky and we want to, you know, think that they're, they're not dependable or trustworthy, but that's so not true. They're here to get that ball rolling. Initiate. And that's their job. They are initiators. They are the, as Nike would say, the just do it people. Just do right? it. Yes. Right? So notice I said they're only 8% of the population. But yet the other 70 or it's, you know, and 92 percent of us believe that we're here to do that uh, with that energy of initiation. And we are not, which creates all kinds of frustration, bitterness, anger, etc. Mm -hmm. And anger does seem to be the hallmark for the manifestors because their strategy, besides initiating things, is to inform people of what their actions are going to be before they take them. The reason that is, is because I think those of us around manifestors kind of sense that there's this wild, indescribable, indefinable energy, like at any moment they might change course or change direction. And so in an attempt to pin them down, you know, we're trying to control them and they buck against control or being controlled. Right. Very mutable. Yeah. Ex yeah, so if they simply learn this one little trick, which is to inform people of what they're going to do before they do it, they could save themselves a lot of anger and they could save other people trying to throw up roadblocks to them. Yeah, because if I'm sure people in that category are um, innovating and seeing ahead what might be right. possible and, and leaning in that direction, but not everybody maybe has that forward vision so yeah. bringing people along with them so that they can catch up and keep pace. Yeah. Interesting. Right. Forming. And it's not them asking permission of others. It's them. It's them simply saying this. Sorry, I just hit my mic. I probably just broke your eardrums. You're fine. Um, <laughs> it's simply them saying uh, to their colleagues or their peers or their family, listen, I'm going to be doing things differently from now on. And instead of going to work from eight to five, I'm going to work at home from eight to 12 and then go into the office or something, you know, to that effect. It's just a matter of me informing you of what my new track is going to be so right. that you don't attempt to stop me from doing that. Right, right. Yeah. And the final type, the reflector, is the rarest on the planet. They make up less than 1% of the population, but they are the ones who are here. <laughs> they reflect the general health of a group or of a, uh, a, a body of people, a family, because all they can do is reflect to you what's going on. And so reflectors, before they can make a decision, their strategy is to wait 28 days 
or the full cycle of a moon. Of I was moon. just thinking about the moon. I was like, like the moon. Yes, yeah, exactly. Oh, interesting. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> They're very much uh, tied to the moon. They're lunar um, people. And so uh, they're very gentle, kind, peaceable, loving creatures. I mean, they, they're just wonderful people to have on the planet, but we have very few of them. And so th because they have this ability to reflect to you the general health of um, the group you're in or of the human species, we, we really should have more generator or, or, excuse me, more reflectors on the planet. They could tell us how we're really doing. So uh, reflectors in that case, again, being the rarest, do they have, sort of allow us to see ourselves because they reflect yes. and we have time to realize the impact of what we're doing on somebody else and yes, then absolutely. Cal calculate whether that was the best strategy or not? Yeah, Interesting. Uh, because they're very open. If you looked at a, a reflector's human design chart, as opposed to, say, yours or mine being generators or manifesting generators, all of their energy centers would be white or open is what we say in human design and that there's no wow. definition. There's they're not the, the centers are not connected to one another at all. And that means that they're not broadcasting their own authentic energy. They are absorbing the energy from around them and then they amplify it and they send it back out as if it were their own energy, but it is not. So essentially whatever we see in the reflector is the general health of the atmosphere that we're in. So I don't know if you're familiar, it, uh, you know, I was a biologist chemistry major in college. And the first things we learned about in environmental science were about indicator species and frogs have happen to be the top or bottom indicator species, species is meaning if you have an environment that carries a lot of frogs, you probably have a healthy natural environment because they're the closest to the ground. They live in the water or in the marshes. And so in, in other words, the, the environment is probably fairly clean and supports the frogs. If your frogs start dying off, there's probably something poisoning the water or something poisoning the ground. Oh, so they're the canaries. They're the, the indicators. Canaries, exactly. That's great. That's another one. Great canary in the mine. Um, if they die off, there's a problem. And so if reflectors are doing really well, then that's an indication that the people they're with, the situations they're in are all very positive and healthy. And if they're not doing so well, if they're not, not happy, if they're ill, then they're probably in an environment that is not healthy and that should be you know like this red flag warning to everybody that's around them that something's not right in the environment uh, if you're in a family and you have a reflector but that reflector's always in bed sick then there's probably something not healthy going on with the rest of the family and that reflector is just showing it to you so wow. right it's a very unique type and so that's our basic five types and their yeah, strategy. Just, uh, put them together one more time for the listeners just so they sure. have it. Generators and manifesting generators make up 70% or so of the population and their strategy is to respond to what shows up in the outer world. Projectors make up about 20 to 22% of the population and their strategy is to wait to be invited into the big things in life. The um, manifestors make up about 8% of the population and they're here to initiate action. And the reflectors make up less than 1% of the population and they're here to wait a full cycle of the moon to make a decision. Wow, that is so interesting. We're at the base of our hour. I'm so happy. And we're gonna come back and talk about uh, our, you know, what is our life purpose when we come back and how we can use human design to figure that out. Now back to our show from a medium's perspective with host Reverend Tracy Lockwood. If you missed the first half of the show or you would like to listen to some other of our episodes, you'll find them on YouTube. 
just go to YouTube and put in Medium Tracy Lockwood and you'll find my channel. Please subscribe. And I've been told that you now have to click the bell or check the bell that's beside the subscribe button if you want notification of the upcoming shows that I'm uploading there. Uh, not upcoming shows. If you're interested in receiving notice when I upload a new video, uh, you'll have to click the bell now on YouTube. So just heads up on that. You know, psychic mediumship is a huge field. And if you're interested in private coaching while you're developing your gift or you'd like opportunities to work in a live group setting via webinar or even uh, academic study, a certification I offer all of the above and would be happy to talk with you um, Janet Hickox offers many opportunities for readings and interpretations via her many gifts of various types of astrology so again her website is living-astrology.com mine is medium tracy lockwood.com so Janet thank you so much um we appreciate that uh, description of the different types, uh, sort of personality types. Is that what you call them? Prototypes? Yeah. You, yeah, yeah we would call them personality types or just types. Types. I think it's just fascinating. Um, yeah. So when it gets down to life purpose, you know, I know in a traditional astrology chart, there are different, you know, houses and different planets that are associated with different things. What uh, I guess I want to ask you for both traditional astrology and human design, what is the part of that that how do you as a reader of the charts and information determine how do we look at life? Yeah, purpose? how do you yeah. find life purpose? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, you know, life purpose, there isn't one component that I can say, oh, look, there it is. That's your life purpose. Right. It, it really is sort of a, a combination of different planets if we're talking about astrology and uh, what signs they're in. And also in human design, we're looking at planets and what uh, personality traits it's turned on, as well as your type and your strategy and your authority. And so let, let's deal with traditional astrology first. If I want to find your, your um, life purpose, I'm going to first look at where the sun is because the sun in regular astrology is going to give me, you know, what you're good at, what your ego structure is built around. And I'm going to look at the moon because it's going to give me an insight to your soul and a little bit of insight into your emotional well-being and how well you're going to be able to utilize the gifts that you brought here through the sun. And then I'm also going to look at the nodes, the north node and the south node, because the north node shows me your destiny and the south node shows me what gifts and talents and a general idea of what your karma is like. And so those things are going to give me an idea of uh, pretty much what you're here to do. And if I'm going to look at it through human design, it becomes really very extraordinary because I'm not only looking at what you're here to do, but I'm also looking at who you're here to be. And we're looking at this through an energetic level. So it's not just from, you know, the planet Saturn sitting at, you know, XYZ degree in, in whatever sign. It's more about how is it working in the format of the energy that comes from that particular energy center through that gate or that personality trait? And those so, are not necessarily corresponding to our chakras, correct? Or are they? Yeah, no, not specifically. They look like chakras and they operate like chakras in that they are um, energy centers. But if you look at the body graph, they're certainly not in the anatomically correct place. Like, for example, the spleen is in the lower left quadrant um, on the chart, which or the excuse me, the lower right quadrant on the chart on the chart. But your spleen is not in the lower left quadrant of your right. body, right? Near, near right? So your ankle, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's not necessarily anatomically correct, but the concept is very similar, which is why, you know, when we look at human design, we see elements of the uh, Chinese I Ching of the uh, Hindu yeah. chakra system of, you know, Western and Eastern astrology. And as well, we see components of the Jewish Kabbalah, the tree of life. If you kind of turn your body graph upside down, you, you kind of get a sense of that 
that tree of life and how those energies work together. So it's a very holistic way of looking at who you are here to be. So now when we're looking at life purpose, we're looking at the mythology of your human design chart. I call it, when I teach this as a class, I call it the story of you because it really is a story. It doesn't just have these stops and starts. It, it really is blending into one whole story and it all begins um, with the role you're here to play on the planet and that's seen through your type, your strategy and your authority. So I'm in the process right now of producing a course um, called the three keys to unlocking the power of your human design oh, and cool. the three keys come right there in the type the strategy and the authority if you learn nothing else about yourself those three things are going to really align you with who you're here to be but with life purpose we're going to take it a couple steps further we're going to look at your personality and we see that through something called the profile um, for example, let me let me pull up your chart really quick. Your profile uh, is a four six. So you're here to be an opportunistic role model. Mine is a, a six two. I'm a role model hermit. So we have these really interesting terms for the the personality through the profile of your human design chart. And I don't want to go, there's 12 different profiles. I don't want to go into those Too right detailed, now. But yeah. yeah, but it's a pretty big component of who you are here to be and what your life purpose is. And then we get to something so unique in human design called the incarnation cross. And it is made up of the conscious sun and the conscious earth and the unconscious sun and the unconscious earth. Now, all that is to say the unconscious is really just coming up from the soul, while the conscious lines are coming up from the personality. So we're really getting into the depth of who you are, and we call this the plot outline of your life. So those three things, the role, the personality, and the plot outline give us a whole lot of information about who you're here to be. Then we can we go a few steps deeper here. I wish you could see me, Tracy. I'm using I my hands. Too. This. I do too. I do too. So in human design, we actually use the planet Chiron. Chiron, as you may know, is a fairly, it's a planet we call the wounded healer. Yes. It's fairly new in the astrological picture. I mean, I think almost all astrologers are at least giving it a nod at this point in time. Oh, definitely. But in, yeah. Yeah. In human design, Chiron is actually representative of your spiritual challenge and your spiritual purpose in this lifetime. And as well, it can point to your deepest wounds and being able to express that part of yourself. So we add that into your life purpose. The two planets, Saturn and Jupiter, are huge in terms of your life purpose. Saturn, they work in tandem, right? Saturn uh -huh. represents the great teacher. Mm -hmm. And shows you what you're learning here at your deepest core, right? To further your evolution, let's say. And then um, as all great teachers, right? You as the learner can choose to learn the lesson or you can be stubborn and get those continual bonks over the head, right? They're right, the house right. falling on your head. Wrap you um, on the knuckles. You That's yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> the continual reminders from the universe that, hey, you haven't learned this lesson yet. But <laughs> One more time. Learn, yeah. <laughs> Just one more time. Let, let me hear it one more time. And um, once you learn your lessons, then you get Jupiter's rewards. And Jupiter is the planet then that brings us luck and rewards for having learned our lessons. So part of your life purpose here, it's not all, you know, hey, I'm supposed to be a counselor and, you know, teach people about love and joy. No. That's not yeah. that that's only part of your purpose because a part of your purpose is also about learning. Yes. And uh, how do I, you know, learn the lessons so that I can evolve to the next level? Yeah. Now the moon is also involved in life purpose in human design as it would be in regular astrology. Be but in human design, the moon represents what drives you, what makes you get out of bed each day, you know, what stimulates you to move forward in life. So the moon plays a key role in showing me what is actually, you know, if you're not some, if you're telling me you're depressed and you're sad and you have no energy to get out of bed in the morning, I already know you're not living your life purpose. And so we can go right to the moon there 
and take a look at what those gates are and find out what those personality traits are that you are not expressing, that are latent or inside of you waiting to be expressed. Very uh, cool. Yeah, and we also use the planet Neptune. Neptune represents your spiritual job or what part you are here to play in the evolution of consciousness on the planet. So in this case, Neptune often, because it's a planet that's pretty far out there, um, many people in our age group, in your age group, will have the same placement because of the distance between Neptune and the Earth for an extended sure. period of time. So for right now, example, Neptune's in Pisces. So a lot of people being born right now have their Neptune job at whatever gate that Neptune is sitting at for the time being. Then we use, lastly, your the nodes, the north and the south node, which we also use in regular traditional astrology. But mm -hmm. in human design, we call it sort of your life cycle trajectory in that we have the south node for the first 40 years of our lives. And so we're trying to operate as if things could happen in a certain way based on probably experiences from previous lifetimes, maybe even from conditioning, especially if you've had a real strong um, conditioning background. Yeah. But, but we, what we find with the south node as we start edging up to age 40 or so is that it's not working for us anymore. We feel like, you know, I've got to do something different. And that is the north node's job. The north node gets activated at about age 40 and then puts us on the trajectory for what our new life cycle is all about. So depending on where the nodes are, you get a real representation of the trajectory of your life cycle and how that plays into your life purpose. So there's a lot of different things that we look at, including... I know no reading of life purpose would be complete without looking at what centers or um, energy centers you have defined versus which ones you have open. Oh, um, right, right. Yeah, or open meaning white. They don't have any energy associated with them. And I'll tell you why, because the energy centers that you have in your chart that are colored in are places where you are broadcasting your authentic energy, where the white centers are places where you're your tendency is to absorb it from the people around you, your family, your friends, your colleagues, etc. You amplify that energy and you send it back out thinking it's your own authentic energy. And it isn't. So we have to look at places where you're being fooled into thinking you're authentic where you're not as part of your life purpose. So we have a lot to look at, but it really boils down to um, a, a few key themes. And, and what I find, I've not yet, seen somebody that who who doesn't have a coherent theme running through their entire human design like you pick up this one theme and it keeps moving through in the different ways that you look at the human design so we can really hone in on life purpose relatively easily um kind but it modulates through the chart there yeah uh, yeah exactly y you see for example in in a well, let's, you know, I, I don't want to look at your, well, I guess I can look at yours. Your listeners won't care, will they? I, care. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so no. as, I, as I look at, you know, your, some of your, your themes, your key themes that are recurring is about how you use your voice, about how you empower people and about how you talk with people. It seems that, you know, your past experiences were really about sharing opinions as opposed to truths that were universal so mm. in this lifetime you come very careful in how you speak with people about what you're intuiting about them or what you're hearing from the other side or what information you're in um sort of receipt of through you know your your extra senses let's call them for now mm -hmm. and yet your north node shows that you have a very physical application of what you're here to share and so even though what you're sharing is very spiritual, even woo-woo information, you're grounding it in for people in a way that's very practical and life-centered. In other words, you don't want to just bring back stuff for them that, you know, hey, you know, the, um, you know, your, your, your grandmother says hi, even though that might be something that, you know, is said. Oh, okay, but not enough. Yes. Exactly. It, it's, it doesn't reach the threshold of uh, the practical 
physical reason why it's important to know that grandma's out there with you, for example. So a lot about your chart then is about going deeper, you know, not just sharing from opinions, but sharing from a deeper place, a more practical place and a place embedded in love. That part you don't lose. That part stays. And using your psychic gifts, it's all over your chart right? Gate 57, the gate of the psychic, gate 46, which says practical down to earth use of that energy. You're a manifesting generator. You have a lot of energy and it is about sharing your voice and empowering people. So those are just some quick things that just looking at your chart, we can see, you know, our themes running concurrently um, about your life purpose. And I do feel, you know, it's interesting, you said that the nodes indicated sort of the first 40 and and more, you know, I'm 57. Mm -hmm. And when I was 44, I had a car wreck, but there were changes occurring before that, too. And it kind of rocketed me into the second half of things here. Mm -hmm. It's it's really interesting to me. I, I really do feel for the first time that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in my right. work. And it's it's very personal in the way that I uh, exhibit that and manifest that and, and demonstrate that in yeah. art. And if I, if I look at your moon, which was part of life purpose, it also supports that with one little extra kind of nudge here. And that's your, your moon or what drives you is in gate 39, which is a gate that we call the provocateur in human design. And so there's a part of you that you're driven to provoke people to become all that they can be without yes, joining the army. like a challenge. Yeah. 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 So, Pushing them. Yeah, you can do better. I see this in you. Yeah. Try that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and so your energetic signature then is as a provoker right? You're provoking people to change. You're provoking people to step out onto a path of initiation, or in some way you are having them, your goal is to have them look for their own specific talents and gifts and (laughs) in a way life purpose. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Wow. Thank you, Janet. That was very generous of you to take uh, time to focus on that. Thank you. Yeah, you're most welcome. And, you know, it was specific because I wanted to make sure, you know, we had examples from a real life person that could say, look, just by me looking at this over the course of just a couple of minutes, we can really get some key insights. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So how, uh, you know, I'm sure people are wondering, well, how would I know if I'm on my life purpose or does our purpose ever change? What do you think about that? Ah, good question. So I think you know you're on your life purpose when you're feeling valued, loved, um, fulfilled. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you don't have challenges. It just means that you feel like you're right on the, the right. right. Yes. Yeah, it, yes, exactly. And, you know, it doesn't mean that, of course, that kind of person isn't challenged, because even though I know I'm doing my oh, life purpose, right. I'm living my life purpose, I am still challenged. Of but course. that's because I'm still human, and I'm still growing, and I'm still evolving. And so life purpose kind of scratches the surface of it. And yes, I do believe in a way that our life purpose sort of morphs as we go along. So if I can, if I can sort of make it mm, sure. kind of a, a make it a spiral, let's say, instead of like a a straight line going up, make it sort of a spiral where you'll learn something and then you have to integrate something and then you learn the next level and you integrate that. So it can feel like a series of two steps forward and one step backward, but you're still a step forward. And so your life path is almost on um, sort of an evolutionary trajectory as seen through a spiral. And it, it never really, the fundamentals of it don't change, but the way that you are working with your purpose perhaps changes because yeah. you're gaining wisdom, right? You're, you're you wiser think, today. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, we learn lessons, but they're layers of understanding. You know, we have mental understanding, we have emotional understanding, we have intuitive understanding, and then we get perspective shifts that are like epiphanies, they just completely finish an issue forever and ever, you yes. know? 
Yes. And, uh, you know, for example, in, in traditional astrology, we always think of the ages as about 40 to 42 as that midlife crisis time. Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting that that also is coming in human design at the time that you're shifting from the south node to the north node? Yes, where absolutely. Yeah. Right. And where, I'm a late bloomer, so mine probably happened when I was 44 with the hit on car wreck. Yeah. Yes. And actually, you're right. It doesn't always happen right on target at age 40. You know, the. But generally. It's, a, it's based on your own evolution and, you know, lessons and birthdays, et cetera. So oh, certainly. Janet, you know. Thank you so much. We are. Yeah. Sadly, at the end of the show, I could talk to you a solid hour more. Thank you for your generosity and being here. If you want to reach Janet, find her at living-astrology.com. And, and can I say one more thing, Tracy? Oh, sure. Yes. If they go to my website, they can get a free copy of their human design chart. They'll just click on the link, give me their birth information, and I will send them back a little chart with their type and strategy on it. Oh, that's so sweet and wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, You're most and, welcome. and for you listening, uh, remember that it is never inappropriate to be kind. And without integrity, you have nothing. We'll see.